Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to look at the uh, Book of Ruth, uh, some comments made by Peter Ruckman on that uh, on that book. He points out the Book of Ruth and the Book of Esther, both are the only two Bible Bible books that are named for women. And both have to, he doesn't point this out, but both have to do interracial marriage. A, uh, a Gentile marries a Jew in Ruth, and a Jew marries a Gentile in the Book of Esther. They don't seem to be forbidden by God. But the guys like Brian Daniel will, will forget to ignore that. And, and Will, Brian, uh, will uh, Buckman in his, uh, his comments uh, in uh, other areas. Very inconsistent, these guys. They can't deal with the scriptures. So when they get the scriptures they can't avoid, they deal with them. You know, have to, have to deal with them as they are. And then when they get other places, they start ranting and raving about interracial marriage. But this is from his uh, commentary, which Brian Denner has uh, in his bookshelf. Page 350. Ruth, Ruth's plea in verses 16 and 17 is the conversion of a pagan to the Lord God. She is giving up her status as a Moabite to become a Jew. See, that's why the, the women in Ezra and Nehemiah got kicked out. And along with their children. They weren't becoming Jews. The Jews are becoming pagans. That's the issue. Spiritual, not racial. So let this guy lie to you and go, well, Ezra and Nehemiah, you know, and you know, Abraham sent to his own king, kindred to you because he wouldn't uh, have any, uh, uh, you know, get a child from the Canaanites. Yeah, because they were heathen. <laughs> the Canaanites. So they want to get a believing wife for, for uh, Isaac. But uh, facts, facts are not important to guys like Brian Daniel. They just spread hate and misinformation and lies. And I keep getting that, you know, some of the supporters come up there. You have much of OCD. You're obsessed with Brian Daniel. Every time you, you halfway put up a video like that, I'm going right back at him. It just motivates me more because it shows, shows it's hurting. He can't stand to be exposed. He's such a phony liar. And his into his, his, his stance in interracial marriage and his kindred purity, and somehow he thinks because he's a kindred pure, as the sense germ, he's going to get a, a, a better reward uh, and get the fruits and this nonsense and sanity, you know. But any type of thing, uh, evil like uh, dealing with uh, stopping people from intermarrying, is uh, insanity because it's not based on what the scriptures say. The scriptures. The covenant that began after Noah was the covenant of governments. And the fact that there were three happened, three dis predominantly races uh, inhabited different, three different areas, the, um, the world that way, is irrelevant. Is irrelevant to the fact of interracial marriage. Oh, we're going to get, Antichrist is going to come and make the whole world gray and get rid of our distinctions and blah, 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 blah. That's insane. That's insane. That's just you know, and that's not dispensational theology. The Lord divided when, when the Lord divided the issue when Abraham began with Israel, he began he divided the world throughout now in two groups, Gentiles and Jews. When the church alone came in, he divided the world into three groups, church, Jews, and Gentiles. Anybody outside of the church is lost, Jew and Gentile. Before that, it was Jew and Gentile, you had to get saved if you had to become a Jew. Salvation was of the Jews. And they had to become adopted in that. Uh, you know, believes at least believe in the God of Israel. So Queen Sheba came in there, in there and things like that. So these had to believe in the God of Israel, and uh, therefore that that was the criteria. You know, they had to reject their own gods, the false gods, and that's what Paul spoke in Romans seventeen. I mean Acts seventeen. Uh, Ruth goes with Naomi and ends up in the line of Christ. She is eternally enshrined in the, in the pages of scripture. Well, she's actually heals one of here. Uh, or is that that's Rahab? Excuse me, that's in, uh, she's uh, Rahab's in uh, the heel of uh, Hall of Fame of Faith in uh, Hebrews 11. So there you go. And so he has another comment down here. Rockman does. 411. Turns out that Ruth the Moabitess, a lower class peasant laboring in the fields, winds up in the line of Jesus Christ. After leaving her country, kindred, friends, relatives, and the Moabite gods. There's the key issue. 
she left her gods and took the true God. To support a widow, she winds up married to the richest man of Bethlehem. To quote, uh, to quote an old Grimm's fairy tale cliche that they lived happily ever uh, after. She was a great great grandmother of David himself. Now, Brian can't deal with this. But he, got run, he's got, he has to run away from it. I said, well, yeah, no one was willing to go down there and the Moabites and, yeah, he's too son. Yeah. <laughs> and she got, he cost her. But Ruth got saved and was no longer considered Moabite. She was considered a Jew. So she switched, you know, the whole issue of the, uh, you know, the boundaries of the habitation. She switched us. She went to, I would check that out. Gentiles up and went to the Jews. Uh, that's what you get with these guys. Lie after lie after lie. And uh, why was these guys particular? It's because they're using the King James Bible to defend their lies. The King James Bible does not support racism and slavery. Slavery is something that had to be adapted to. It's common in the ancient world. But it was never, never what it was meant to be. Man didn't start with being slaves. <laughs> you know. And, you know, and of course, the King James Bible only uses the word uh, slave and slaves like twice, I think, in the whole. She's servants. The modern Bible's taken, use the word slave. So all these guys using, see Ruffin using that time. Slave, you're a slave. You know. But, um, and they think it's, you know, the Hamite curse continues. We'll deal with that. We'll deal with the, more of the, in, the inconsistency, the hypocrisy of that garbage. With me, uh, doing his book. But I just want to point out the issue of Ruth. And uh, he can't deal with he can't just like he can't deal he was one eight. Interesting thing about uh, Buckman here, the typology he uses. He uses the uh, the fact that you know the kinsman redeemer had a close Ruth had a closer kinsman uh, that was closer that refused to redeem her, and he likens that to the father because the father already had was going to be married to Israel, and uh, he says, well. Boaz represents Jesus Christ. It's two persons, not parts. It represents the typology there. It's two persons involved there. Now, where they only go with that, you know, typology. The point is, is that uh, Buckman saw it as two: uh, the father is one person, and the son is another person. By all, what you know, Brian wants to talk about. Oh, you know, Buckman believed in the three parts, like I do. No, <laughs> you look at how you talk about typology, you see exactly they saw persons in there. So we'll stop here. Uh, I see a welcome, uh, Brian has another video up dealing with salvation and his false gospel. And he's preaching uh, before a, a beautiful waterfall. Got some good light. I'd say that much more. I hope you guys appreciate that as you're sitting home, going to work every day, knowing he's in front of his waterfall preaching uh, from your, with your money. Uh, talking about how you, you have to live a changed life. He, he's preaching, preaching the, gospel of Joel, the gospel of Joel Osteen. See, he's prosperous. He's lived off you guys. He's made, you know, like the prosperity preachers who go around the Cadillacs and stuff and talk about how great, the, you know, God will bless you, God will bless you. And they're living off everybody else. Yeah, it's been fine 10 years. He's not working. The bum. In violation of 2 Thessalonians 3. And uh, he refuses to work. He says, I'll never work a secular job, even though Paul worked as a tent maker. He's too proud for that. And uh, so he's in front of his beautiful property. Now he's getting very much into nature. You know, it's that he wants to learn about that's to glorify God. You know, yeah. learn about the rocks and the trees and the birds. And uh, now he's also talking about you know raptures. You know, rapture. Well, rapture might not happen tomorrow. You know, so we have to enjoy life. So we can put videos up. How to enjoy? Life. Yeah, sure. You got beautiful land like that in front of a beautiful waterfall. Yeah, but life is going to be enjoyable for him. But he's not. He's not preaching. He's not. He has no ministry. That's why we're asking. He's got a ministry. He's a phony. And, uh, you know, that's why I saw everybody say, Oh, you won't see me. Huh? I'm going after the guy. I don't know many bones about the guy. So he's exposing the false gospel and uh, false ministry. Everything about the guy is a phony. Everything about him. And now, of course, he's a, you know, he's, his views on the kindred, a pure kindred. And he's glad he had German heritage and his family was kicked out of Germany by the Roman Catholics. And the guy makes up stuff lie after lie after lie. Anyway, he says, but I see his DNA. 
you know, he formed his own bounds of habitation when he came in. They didn't deal with other people. They didn't get, they didn't, get, you know, get mixed up. What is he talking about? Oh, unbelievable. You need people like this guy, you know. He's a good liar. He's a good liar. But they won't deal with the book of Ruth. He wants to deal with Naomi and her sins. Not the fact that Ruth came in, converted, and became a Jew, and is now part of that the heritage of the Jews, which any pagan could do. Any pagan. Salvation. So you through a book of Jonah. The Assyrians will save. And the Lord rebukes the Jews of his day with that with, with, with Jonah. They would have repented. You know, Jonah, you know, at, at the at the preaching of Jesus. Uh, Jonah, they they did repent at the preaching of Jonah, and one greater than Jonah was among them. Uh, so the Lord was constantly using Gentiles uh, to you know to show them, say you know these Gentiles <laughs> believe are quicker than you did. So, so you're going to have a lot more to pay for and responsible for for rejecting the truth that uh, when the, you know, the Messiah came, uh, Jesus Christ came as, as the Messiah, they rejected him. And these guys were, were repenting with far less uh, on those issues uh, with the coming of the prophets. So we'll stop here and put this up. Amen. Thank you.